Hello there. Welcome and thank you for joining me. Welcome back to the channel once again. Well, now today we've got a treat for you because it's a model I didn't have until just this week. So it's something I've just acquired because I felt it was one of the Matchbox kits that I didn't have that I actually wanted. Now, I, I don't think I ever had it as a child. I've got some vague recollection. I may have bought it and then agreed to swap it with somebody for something else, but I can't remember. Um, but if I did, it was not built. I didn't build it. Um, and every time I, um, I sort of see that artwork, which is quite iconic, isn't it? It's from the Vietnam War. Uh, obviously, the uh, the Cobra was uh, America's first helicopter gunship. And it was very, very narrow and very tall, thin. So it's actually quite a small target. I was actually looking at a YouTube video a few days ago when they talked about the development of it and said uh, they were quite hard to knock out of the sky from a distance because you couldn't see them until they were right on top of you. Um, because it's this sort of tandem sit up and beg style helicopter and it suited itself perfectly to being a gunship. You see that sort of image and it's over Vietnam in the picture here and it makes you think of apocalypse now doesn't it? <laughs> it actually says on the front there um, it's saying uh, US Army Huey Cobra helicopters demonstrate their speed and firepower in Southeast Asia in June 1968. Now, an interesting point to just note that uh, it looks like they're actually equipped with Zuni rockets. Now Zuni rockets were absolutely the typical weapon in Vietnam uh, and they were carried by most of the American aircraft including the Skyhawk and the uh, Corsair and, and even the Phantoms. Um, but I remember reading the, there was a term, I'm going to go off, off beam here, please bear with me. But there's um, a couple of videos you can watch, the documentaries about the disaster on the USS Forrestal, which was an uh, American aircraft carrier uh, in the Sea of Japan, is it? Uh, you'll forgive me if I'm not, it's, it's the sea anyway, out to the east of, uh, out to the east of Vietnam. And, um, it doesn't sound right, the Sea of Japan, I'm sure I've got my geography wrong, forgive me. But anyway, um, John McCain, the Senate American senator that, as we know him, who died recently, sadly, um, I had a big spat with Donald Trump, of course, uh, before and after he died, but he was um, a US Navy Skyhawk pilot, and he was in this uh, d disaster where basically there was an electrical uh, fault on one of the aircraft, and it actually fired its Zuni rockets into a couple of other planes, um, and he was one of the planes that was hit and burst into flames and he had to jump for his life and leap out of this thing that was on fire and all the ammunition started going out. It was a horrible, horrible accident. The, the aircraft carrier nearly sank. It was a massive fire. Many, many men lost their lives. It was a terrible fire. It ripped through the, the deck. All the, all the aircraft were armed with weapons. A very nasty incident indeed and one of the, the dark days in the American Navy's history. And an accident, you know, it wasn't even as a result of combat. So very unfortunate. Anyway. That's the Zuni rockets. Let's get back into the Cobra. Let's have a look what we got. So, typical matchbox, and this is one of the very first ones. This is PK9 from the very first set. We've got some artwork on the back, and of course, in our usual way, we've got an artwork on the side which shows you what your Cobra helicopter is going to look like if you don't paint it. And it actually looks the business, to be honest. And I think these colours really suit it. Looks a bit wicked, doesn't it? Like an insect almost. On the other side of the box, we've got the artwork at the end, and then we've got a little plug for the Lysander, the Alpha Jet, the Strike Master, and the Gloucester Gladiator. And then on the back, in a normal way, we have the badging here saying it's 1973. And one thing that's very unusual about this particular model, um, I presume it's all the Cobras, it has a very small, smaller window than normal, much smaller. It's about it's about a third smaller than the standard window, that, which is very interesting. And then you've got your, your colour call out, so you've got the US Marine Corps, or you've got the United States Army 235th Attack Helicopter Flight. Um, not sure there's a whole lot of difference, really. Uh, one's brown and one's green, basically. Um, there we go. So, um, let's have a look inside, and without further ado, see what we have. Because I know that a lot of you actually asked me, have you not got the Cobra? And when I was asked the question, I thought, I thought to myself, and I thought, do you know what, I haven't, and I should have. <laughs> and I haven't got any yet. This is the only helicopter of my entire model snatch collection. So, there we go, something new. <laughs> Let's have a look at Right. There's the 1973s, so it's original, so we're going to be a little bit gentle here. Yes, there we go. 
Oh, so we'll start with the uh, pieces that just dropped into my hand, and it's uh, this is quite nice. It's very original. Um, I'm sure the plastic hasn't seen better days. A little bit scratchy looking. So this is the uh, the big bubble canopy that the Cobra has, and it has indeed got quite a lot of scratches on it. We're being truthful. A bit scratchy, but the nice thing is it's still got its PK9. Now this is something that just disappeared very quickly. I, not sure if I've seen another one that's got this sort of badge on it with the PK number. And then the, the piece of sprue, so that's nice and original if ever I saw it. Uh, just perhaps in need of a bit of a polish up before it gets used to uh, eliminate a few of the scratches. But it's a nice piece, very nice original piece. And then we have two, two colours in this one, because it's a purple range. And it's the original issue. So we have then some decals, which we'll have a quick look at now. Turn them the right way up. Uh, very simple, it's basically a, a danger keep clear of the tail rotor warning. <laughs> and it's like a, a banner that goes around yellow around the tail. A couple of, uh, of markings, marines, or just plain. Uh, and that's it really, and those are in excellent condition. 1973 originals, looks mint. I think you can use those this afternoon, no problem at all. So that's good. Then we have the instructions now. For some reason, we have another slightly odd variation in our instructions colour. It's now not purple, but lilac. Very odd colour, I've got to say. Let's just have a little read then. So it says, a tandem seat attack helicopter first deployed in Vietnam by the US Army in 1967. And it was then used extensively in the close support role. This aircraft is used by the Marine Corps together with the more powerful Union version, the Sea Cobra which is the one to put on the carriers, of course. A wide range of armaments can be carried slung under the stub wings after the cockpit, including gun pods, rocket pods, wire guided missiles, etc. And machines have a chin turret operated by the forward crew member. So, is the forward crew member the pilot? I've got a feeling he probably isn't. I think the pilot... Again, forgive me if I'm lacking in knowledge, but I think the pilot sits behind, in fact. Interesting. On the reverse, we have got we've got your Zuni rockets here. Nose of the Zuni rockets, there they are. We've got your seats, pilots, stubby wings, your little cannon, and you've got your uh, what are that? That's the control sticks, the tail rotor, and then you've got the cockpit, um, the uh, bathtub. I'm not sure that piece is, but I'm honest, don't worry about that. Um, Colour call outs as usual. All in humbrol, normal thing. And then right into the instructions, let's, let's have a look what we've got. So, in our lovely lilac colour, we've got this um, forward and rear uh, personnel cockpit seating with an instrument panel in between. Um, looks a lot more substantial at the back, doesn't it? So I'm guessing that is the pilot because it sits a little bit higher as well. Then you've got your little um, cannon turret that's mounted beneath, like a little tank turret, isn't it? mounted directly beneath uh, the nose of the plane, the chopper. And then we've got the two halves of the fuselage coming together, popping in your, your jet engine at the back, or turboprop I should say, and putting in your little turret. And then you build up your tail, and your tail rotor here. Pop your tail on, and your canopy. And then you start building your rotors, and they look really massive, to be honest, compared to the helicopter. So they're very meaty, these rotors. And then you've got your little stub wings on the side, stabilizers at the rear. And then finally you put your skids on, and your Zuni rockets. And it looks like it's some, some sort of a cannon. I think it's like a Vulcan gun pod it's carrying. It looks like one on either side to me. Uh, impressive. Very impressive. It's actually very well armed, isn't it? I didn't realise it carried that much. Let's have a look at the actual sprues themselves then. Um, unlike my recent video, I'm going to try not to break anything today. <laughs> so here we go, we've got our little Zuni rocket pods. I'll put them in a bit closer for this. There we go. Zuni rockets here and here. Pilot co pilot, or pilot and gunner, I should say. And then it's quite a, it's quite a, a dynamic looking pointy plane, isn't it? This it's uh, as helicopters go, it looks very, you know, business-like. Very pointy, aerodynamic, sharp. 
the mouldings are nice, it's all recessed panel lines. Uh, it's a nice kit actually this, to be honest, I think it's better kit than I thought it was going to be. Again, other side of the fuselage, the tail, which is where the tail rotor goes on this side, starboard side, and little stub wings here. Very nice sprue actually, I like that, that's really impressive. And then we've sort of got the second sprue which is all the ancillary parts, so we're starting off with the rotors themselves. So we've got the main rotors, as you can see there there's some nice, quite good detailing work there on the, uh, the sort of flanges uh, at the base of the rotors. Same on the other side. Then you get the little Vulcan gun pads and we've got over here we've got the Zuni rocket pods, obviously not the, uh, the face of them, not the tips, it's just the actual body of it. Then you've got your tail rotor here and we've got our landing skids there. Uh, cockpit and various little ancillary parts here we've got, um, looks like it's uh, aerial control sticks, the seats and part of the instrumentation there. Well, that's it really, there's not a lot to it in terms of its uh, content. However, um, yeah, actually in contrast with the Heinkel 111 I did recently, it's, it's actually quite impressed me this. That's, there's more to it, for, this is only, again, a 25 pence kit when it came out. And for 25 pence that feels quite a lot of kit, it's interesting, it's well moulded, it looks fairly sharp as well. Much sharper moulding I'd say, more detailed than on that Heinkel. So I think that that's a, sort of a 9 out of 10. The only downside on this particular one is just that mine's a bit scratched, which I don't think we can punish the whole kit for. Um, it just wants a little bit of renovation to get the scratches off that, but everything else is absolutely fine. It's all there. Looks perfect. So, 9 out of 10. Well done, the chopper. <laughs> but it wasn't more successful in Vietnam, but that's another story. Thanks very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that. I thought it was interesting. Um, Please stay tuned, we've got a few more other uh, Matchbox Classics coming up very, very soon. So remember, please do subscribe if you haven't already and ding the notification bell so you'll get informed as soon as those videos become available. In the meantime, thanks for joining me. Take care of yourselves. Thanks a lot and bye for now.